right now we are with Mr. Andrew Yang, and he's the first Chinese American United States president candidate, and at a Chinese American convention in Washington. So welcome, Andrew. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Okay. So tell us your background and why you decided to run for the you know president of the United States. Well, I'm a serial entrepreneur who's worked in technology and business for a number of years. And right now, America is going through one of the greatest economic and technological transitions in human history, where technology is changing the American economy in ways that's making labor less and less central. And so I'm running for president to help get America through this transition, because right now its political leaders do not understand either business or technology well enough to understand what needs to be done. So what, is, what make you think that uh, political leaders do not understand this? Well, I talked to them, and it's clear they don't understand. And <laughs> if you saw even the recent hearings when they had Mark Zuckerberg come in and testify, they don't understand Facebook. Most of them, no offense to people of this age, but most of them are, are white men in their 60s and 70s who never worked in technology. And so the native understanding among our political class here in the United States is quite low. I watched that TV about the, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. So what if you were the president of the United States, and what would you do? Well, the first thing that uh, the United States has to do is it has to start trying to focus its economy in different ways because right now GDP is going to keep going up, but more and more Americans are going to get left behind as we automate away truck driving jobs, retail jobs, call center jobs, and on and on through the economy. So we need to have different measurements for the economy, and then we need to harness some of the innovation in Silicon Valley with artificial intelligence and distribute that value quickly and broadly to the American people so that people uh, can more effectively make transitions and we can make the labor market more dynamic. So you were born in the 1975. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, uh, well, you, you, you are really young, so what made you, what has, you know, come to this uh, decision? It's quite a, you know, a guts to do the, make oh, this decision. You. Well, uh, again, I mean, if you see the challenges that the U.S. is facing, Donald Trump won the presidency because this country automated away four million manufacturing jobs in the Midwest. And we're about to do the same thing to other categories of workers. So it's not about my age. It's about who understands the technology and business issues that are going to be tearing American society apart in the coming years. Um, American institutions are not doing very well right now. And that's why I felt compelled to run for president. And I can see the message is resonating very, very clearly in Iowa, New Hampshire, and other states around the country. What if you won and become the first president, first Chinese president of the United States? And what changes you are going to make? Well, uh, again, the, the main task is to help America transition through the, these uh, times of technological innovation in ways that, that right now they're not able to. But I would change a lot of things, truly. So one thing I would do is that America needs to become a place where people want to come build businesses, start families, and start careers the way my parents did. And so I would staple a green card to the diploma of every international student, including every Chinese student who comes to the States to study, because it doesn't make sense for America to educate and train people who will then go back to other parts of the world to start companies that are going to end up uh, creating jobs and creating growth. So we need to do a lot of things differently here in the United States. But for now, you know, uh, do, um, President Donald Trump said that uh, all Chinese students are spies. Uh, what do you say about this? You know, I know many, many Chinese people, and, uh, and as far as I can tell, most everyone's coming to the States to study, to learn, uh, to try and advance themselves and, and uh, create economic opportunities the same way my parents did. So I have a very, very different point of view than President Trump does on most things. So how your family see your, your decision, uh, your parents and your family? Well, they're very excited now. I think when I first talked to them about it, um, you know, they were more concerned. Uh, they believed that America would uh, not be ready for a Chinese-American president. But again, I've been around the country to New Hampshire, Iowa, and other states, and America is very much ready for a different form of leadership. What do you make you think that American is ready for the Chinese-American president? Well, so if you look at the last number of cycles here in America, with Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, and Barack Obama, America has been looking for a different kind of leader for years because the American society is struggling. Um, where the life expectancy in the U.S. has declined for the last two years uh, and people are not doing well. 
throughout the country, and that's why I'm confident that America's ready for a different form of leadership. They don't care about my being Chinese American. They care about who's going to make their lives better. So after you decided to run for the president of the United States, and your life probably changed, right? So what is the biggest challenge for you? I mean, the biggest challenge is being on the road so much away from my family because I have two young children, uh, two boys who are six and three. So I miss them a lot. Um, but uh, you know, that's the challenge you take on uh, when you want to solve big problems. You have uh, two young kids, and what do you see that their future in the next 10 or even 20 years later? And what do you, can you just imagine what kind of country or what kind, kind of community they should live in? Well, that's exactly why I'm running for president, because if you look at what's going to happen in the United States over the next 10 to 20 years, many of the changes are going to be very, very bad, and they're going to be bad for my kids, uh, your kids, everyone's kids. And so that's why I'm running, to try and make it so that America is still a place we're excited to raise our children in. You know, as an entrepreneur, when you run a company, it could be very different when you run a country, right? So what's uh, your, your background and can benefit for you to be a president? Well, uh, you know, I've built amazing teams that have created thousands of jobs around the country, and I think that is what the U.S. government needs. It is a very different process. We're not going to be able to do the same types of things that you can do in a corporate environment where you have a lot more freedom, uh, but I believe I have the right values and priorities and orientation to get a lot done. You mentioned about you have the right values, so what is your value? Well, well my value is to try and improve uh, improve the lives of everyday Americans and right now the lives of everyday Americans are not trending in the right direction and our government has been asleep at the switch uh, in addressing these challenges for several decades so that's what my values are my values are to try and improve people's lives our slogan is humanity first we have to build a society that actually values humanity instead of uh, capital efficiency okay so this show is called our interview is called innovation dialogue so what is your definition uh, for innovation in one or two sentences? Well, innovation is trying to solve a problem in a new way, and that's what America needs. America needs leadership and a government that's going to try and solve these problems in new ways. Okay. We're looking forward to this new way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.